Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and I want to take a minute right off the bat to say thank you to all the new subscribers. We finally broke 4,000. That is quite the feat to accomplish. Couldn't do it without the existing subscribers and patrons. Uh, sharing this stuff, using that like button, that really brings the information out for other people to find it real easy whenever they're searching for how to do tuning stuff on there. So uh, that being said, if you have not already hit that subscribe button down in the corner, make sure and mash that button, hit the bell. That way you don't miss out on new content, specifically the live stuff. We always have a blast on the live show. So if you see a notification pop up saying that we're doing a live show on Thursday, which is at 8 Eastern, 8 Eastern, 8 Eastern, jump in on that. But we also do the impromptu shown on the weekends uh, and it's impromptu thus impromptu tune so make sure and jump in and check that out it's a blast it normally goes on for an hour and a half two hours and we just kind of shoot the breeze talk about cars performance you know all the hot topics so that out of the way we are here today to talk about gen 5 tune oh yeah by the way what do you guys think about the shop this is the shop that i learned how to work on cars back in oklahoma my family shop that's the super auto up on the four post lift back there uh man i miss being able to work on vehicles uh in a shop like this that had everything that you wanted and needed so shout out to my stepdad floyd uh for exposing me to performance modifications and that's his dragster uh that corner right uh, there uh, uh, 71 uh, nova yeah nova vega Vega, 71 Vega, runs on uh, methanol, you know, it's a, I believe it's in the sevens, it's a, it's a quick little car, it's fun, uh, so that being said, we're talking about Gen 5s today, specifically we are talking about idle tuning the Gen 5s, which is an art form, back in the day, Gen 3s, Gen 4s, it's airflow based, everything was fairly simple, you just made a couple adjustments, and then you let the uh, adaptive idle stuff kind of take over and learn for you. On the Gen 5s though, we moved into the torque based platform, and so we did away with airflow based idle tuning, and things get really wonky, in particular whenever we talk about normally aspirated tunes that have a lot of lope down below. Where there's a lot of overlap, we start to run into issues. So, the big thing, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and get that disclaimer out of the way, then we'll jump back into it. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, now that that's out of the way, the big thing that you need to know going into this is that you have to have your airflow tables dialed in before you can properly adjust the torque settings in order to get the idle uh, to work out right. And I want to thank Jeff, one of the patrons who's been super kind enough to let me use his tune file and his log files that we recently used to actually dial in his big cam on his truck, 2014 Silverado. And uh, there, it, it took a little work, took a little, uh, there was a learning curve to it. There's a lot of things that are different and the more aggressive the cam is, the more uh, hard, the harder that it is to get this stuff dialed in. And there was a couple of uh, speed bumps along the way as far as we had a faulty sensor to deal with that was causing issues. But we won't get into that. Nonetheless, you have to have your mass airflow table and your VVE table, your virtual volumetric efficiency table, dialed in in order to appropriately or properly dial in your torque table. So I'm going to drop a link up in the corner over there uh, to the Gen 5 uh, airflow tuning videos. So if you need to go back and review, do that. Until then though, let's jump in. We're going to look at a tune and talk about a couple things that you need to set up right off the bat. So here we are underneath engine, idle, and RPM. The big things that you want to do is adjust your base set points. This has already been adjusted on that. We bumped them up to 850. You don't have to go to 850, but it is dependent on how aggressive your cam is. You can start just stepping it up to 750 across the board, 800. But you need to adjust those. Same ordeal with the rolling, moving idle. Bump those up. Be aware that zero is first gear, sixth is park or neutral. You can actually find those mappings up here in the idle gear map. Doesn't quite make sense, but there you go. Neutral is six, park is six. Uh, so if you don't have those set right, you will have issues. Now, everything else on this table, don't mess with it. You do not need to mess with it. If people are telling you that you need to make adjustments to speed control or integral or 
or any of that stuff, you do not need to adjust that stuff. You might need to make some adjustments to the startup tables, which are the park neutral. And then you can see here based on ECT temp and the engine run time, some set points, bump these whole tables up so you're above your minimum. In this case, we are, you know, it, it's above 800 across the board. That is about it. You should not need to set up any of the uh, air conditioning stuff, heater performance. All the stuff that's already in the adaptive idle should work no matter what the size of your cam is. Now, the be next big thing is the idle torque tab. There's two things in here. One of them is the speed control reserve, and the other one is the external load that we adjust. The external load goes versus the zero pedal idle torque, which we will log in the scanner. And this is kind of the upper limit to what that thing should allow the torque setting to read at. This one's been adjusted down specifically around this range, which is between 800 and 1000, where this vehicle idles at, to say that 50, 46 to 50 is the max in there. So basically, I came in here at 800, set that to 50, and then I interpolated up and down. So basically interpolated that way from 50 all the way to 500 and then from 50 all the way up to whatever is down at the 6600 RPM range. Once you set that, you shouldn't have to change anything on that again. Same ordeal with the speed control reserve. Uh, this one is probably, uh, this one's already been set up. You're going to be around 8 on these. I like to come in, multiply them by about 0.8 to reduce 20% of the speed control reserves because we are not making as much power uh, down low with the uh, aggressive cams. You, you just, you're not, you, you have less cylinder pressure because of the overlap, so you're not making as much power. The cam is designed to make power based on the RPM range listed in the cam card, so it might be 3,000 to 5,000. That's where it is most efficient. It is inefficient down at uh, idle. So we are actually going to run into the issue where we're not making the power that the engine thinks we should. And that's why the torque comes into play. So if we jump over and look at a log here, in particular, this one is a prime example. The set point on this log was 850 and we're running at 700 RPMs. And the reason behind that is, is because we've got negative 10 degrees of timing. That being said, these are the things that we need to log on this. We need the engine RPM. We need the intake man manifold pressure. We need a uh, cylinder uh, air mass, which is not on this log, unfortunately. We added it after the fact. Then you want time in advance. Then if you go down here, we have zero pedal engine torque. You can see that's at 53. That's hitting the limit that we've set. That's an issue. We should not be at that. Then we want to do predicted engine torque command, immediate engine torque command, and delivered engine torque. These all will tie back to the torque tables. And so if we are saying that we're at 53 zero pedal engine torque and we are delivering 76, we are delivering too much torque. And that is the engine trying to take timing out to reduce that torque. The reason that it's doing it through timing is because it is getting too much airflow. So if your mass airflow sensor or your manifold air pressure speed density tune is not correct at this point in time, you will chase your tail in circles until it is. So there's no reason to make any of these adjustments until you've gotten the airflow dialed in. So what do we do with this information? We know that we're not achieving our 850. We know that we're having to pull 10 degrees of timing uh, to try and, and limit what is our torque settings down here to make our uh, output, our delivered engine torque, better match our zero pedal engine torque, which should be a lot lower than that. We're maxing out our table on that. Well, there's a couple things that people do that are not the correct things. If there's guys coming over from the Gen 4 and Gen 3 stuff, they'll come into the Spark and they'll go into the minimum start base table and they will jack up uh, the range that they're looking at. So we have that 20, I added that. So that's normally negative five. Uh, I added that on a run through of doing this video. So think of that as negative, God dang it, come on now, work with me, negative five, there we go. So this is what it would normally look like. Guys have a tendency to come in here, highlight the area in uh, where you would actually have the idle and try and just force this to 15 degrees of spark. You're going to totally wig out the torque tables if you do this and it will not idle properly. Do not do that. If you do a compare and find out that your tune has been tuned by a previous person this way, set this back to stock. Same ordeal underneath idle and RPM. If a lot of this stuff has been jacked with, set it back to stock. Trust me, it will work in its stock form. 
So what we do, what we need to do is go in and look at our virtual torque tables. Now these tables have been updated and you're going to be able to track this down. If we were to go in and look the air mass for our idle on this, if we were logging it uh, in that log, would have been around 0.2. So if we go in and we say 0.2 and we're between 700 and 900, these are the cells that we're looking for. You notice how it highlights the cells all the way down through? Well, then we need to go look at our spark and see exactly which one that we were on. Well, we were on at negative 10 and it was commanding 50 foot-pounds of torque. So actually in this area, before I had made these adjustments, it would have read 50 foot-pounds of torque. We want to bring this down a lot. Specifically, we want 50 foot-pounds of torque to be closer to what we would be making if we were at 10 or 20 degrees of spark advance not at negative 10. So by bringing negative 10 down and bringing zero down and 10 down, we are now going to be in the range of actually commanding zero to 10 degrees of spark. Once you change those, just subtract them down. If you, you can try and do percentages, but percentages on small numbers won't do much. If you try to take uh, you know, 20 degrees of timing or 20 foot pounds of torque and multiply it by 0.8, it might drop out to 18. So just subtract these down until you get into a decent range and then interpolate up and down through these ranges to make them smooth. See how those shifted? Now whenever you extrapolate, they're going to shift again. That was the air mass table. That is for mass airflow. We have to do the same thing for the map table and the E85 air mass and the E85 map table if you are running flex fuel. If not, you can just do it on the air mass and the map. The other side of it is, is that if you are running a cam that you still advance, if you did not put a locked cam gear on, or if you still have these seven degrees of available timing on there, you will need to adjust both the zero and the seven and a half degrees table. So in this case, we've already kind of shifted these down and we should be kind of in a blend mode between zero and seven and a half degrees. You can log camshaft angle to see exactly where you're at, but you're probably going to be closer to zero in those situations. Now, if we go over to the map, it's just going to be mass air, uh, mass, excuse me, I'm getting tongue tied, manifold air pressure as our signal. And then if we were to look at our scanner, we can extrapolate the same information there saying on that we're at 76 KPA. So we're going to be in these ranges, we and these are still pretty high, so these would need to be brought down uh, to lower our torque. Honestly, if you're still running mass airflow, though, that's going to be the predominant. And this is going to be a filtered set point, but if we come in here and subtract 40 foot pounds of torque and then do the same thing where we extrapolate this stuff up and down, or interpolate, I should say. That'll give us a better idea of where we're at. And you'll have to do this a couple times. Now, what your end goal is, is you want to find a log that looks more like this. Here, we're in idle. And if you go down and you log predicted engine torque source and immediate engine torque source, it will show you that you are on idle. That is what's controlling everything. We're looking at the wrong log. Same ordeal on this one, though. We are in idle. So if you then go up and look at idle, we are now commanding zero advance as opposed to the other log in the same area. We had negative 10 on our timing. So we've already kind of dialed this in. If we're not getting positive, it's not the end of the world based on where the cam is and how uh, laggy it is to get into power. But the cool thing about it is, is now if we go down and look at our torque, our zero pedal engine torque is now at six foot pounds and are delivered is at seven. So things are now meshing up. They're lining up appropriately. We are delivering the appropriate amount of torque that we are calling for in that range. And so if we go back up and double check everything, look at that, we're at 851 RPM. We are one RPM off of our set point. That is perfection in this situation. So that is a lot to digest. This is a very, very intricate topic. And we can go into more specific parts of this topic, but you have to realize the big steps on this are, first, get your airflow tables dialed in properly. Your mass airflow table and your speed density table have to be good. You have to be within that, you know, three, 4% of air plus or minus. If you are outside of that range, 
You will run into issues whenever you start doing your torque tuning. And then we need to have realistic set points down at the bottom end of saying, hey, we're going to be making less torque on this cam at idle, so we're going to actually have to adjust that out until we see everything start lining up like we did on that last log, where we actually got to zero time in advance. And that's fine. If it runs fine there, you do not have to hunt for 10 or 15 degrees of timing like we used to on the old uh, cam setups on Gen 3s and Gen 4s. This is a different platform. You're talking about direct injected. Things are different. The dynamics of the engines are completely different. You need to do what makes the engine happy and go from there. And so, you know, we might have to do 10, 15 adjustments on different things as far as dialing in the torque table, especially if you're having to work through both E85 and gas. If you run E85 and tune this on E85 and get it tuned in directly on E85, my best uh, advice is to go in and try and calculate the percentage difference. Say, here's what it was beforehand. I had to take 30% of torque out of E85, then go back to your gas tables for the torque and take 30% of torque out in that idle range uh, appropriately. And it should be closer, but you will probably still have to uh, tune your idle on pump gas. Don't get down the rabbit hole of adjusting all that crap on the idle pages. That will just cause you more heartache and headaches than anything because you will fight yourself and you will also set the ECM up to fight you as you try and learn this process or get this stuff dialed in. There's plenty of people out there that will tell you that honestly there's only a couple things that you generally have to adjust once you get the torque set up on that and if the torque tables are dialed in appropriately everything else falls in place on the factory setting. So that's been it. I want to thank all the new subscribers. Uh, if you have any questions make sure and hit up the comments down below. If you uh, found any value in this video, hit the thumbs up. If you uh, need me to dive into specific topics around idle tuning, bleh, sorry. Maybe, uh, maybe I should slow down on the beer tonight. If you uh, have any suggestions around idle tuning, uh, just hit them up in the comments down there. If I need to make videos going into in you know specific parts of this process, I'm more than happy to. I know I think I've got a third gen video out there, maybe or a general video. I need to do the fourth gen, and I may still I still need to do a third gen specific. So those will be coming down the pipe. But uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell as I said, so you don't miss out on anything. Make sure and check out the links to the Patreon and the merch down below. Uh, remember the credo, ABT, always be tuning. And as usual, I want to say thank you for stopping by the garage.